The mortise and tenon joint is a classic woodworking joint for joining rails and styles in frame style construction of furniture. So this is used in tables, chairs, you name it. And it's a very strong joint and you just make two pieces. There's a tenon, which is basically a stub that's sticking out of one piece. And then you've got a mortise, which is a hollowed out rectangle and the other piece that these two made up to create a tight joint that gets glued and very strong joint. So how do you make this joint? There's a couple different methods. We're going to be using the table saw and the drill press for the, um, for the mortise. But the first step in, in, any, in making any joinery is doing the layout on your actual pieces of wood. So let's put our model aside. We're going to make a new joinery on these pieces. Now the design of the mortise and tenon follows some basic rules about proportions relative to the stock that you're using. For instance, tenons, generally you don't want them to be any smaller or larger than one third of the width of the stock that they're cut out of. So for example, in this piece of wood, we've got a one and a half inch wide piece. So we're gonna make our tenons half inch wide. In the other direction, you can be a little more flexible you can make them longer if they need to be. They can be the whole length, in fact, of this piece of wood. They could be the whole two inches. We're gonna make a fully shouldered tenon, though, just because that becomes a little bit nicer and easier to hide the seams around in the, in the pieces when they go together. We're using a marking gauge, mortising gauge. These have different names. And um, what we've got here is a movable face that will index up against the side of the wood that we're, that we're going to be marking that provides a reference surface against which these two pins will scribe lines that outline the sides of the tenon. So these pins are adjustable. This one can move just by pulling and pushing on that control there. And we know we want our tenon to be one half inch wide. So I'm just gonna set this to one half inch using my ruler. There's half inch, there we go. And now we're gonna to wanna to also set the position of this face where we want it. Now, we're obviously gonna want that tenon in the middle of the piece of wood, so if this is one and a half inches wide, we've got half inch, half inch, half inch, so I'm gonna need to be a half inch in. So I'll measure a half inch from this face to that first pin as well. Okay, so there's a lot of eyeballing involved here. And one of the things, you know, whenever you eyeball something in woodworking, you always want to test it first. So I, yeah, it's good to have scrap wood for this, you know. You can you could test out your, your, um, your, your settings. So, and what those do, what, what's happening is those pins are scribing lines. Well, I have this face pressed up against the side of the wood. And that's what's keeping them in the right place. Now I'm going to check my work because I, like I said, when you eyeball things, sometimes they're a little off. So I'm checking if I'm half inch from the end and I'm checking if there's actually half inch between those scribe lines. Okay, so the rest of the marks for the tenon. What we wanna do for any kind of woodworking joinery is always mark all the way around. So there's gonna be a set of lines scribing around the top of this wood, around the other sides, and also at the depth that we wanna go. And that's actually the next decision we have to make about this joint. We know the width, um, the length is somewhat arbitrary. The depth of it, though, is not arbitrary. We have to stay within the confines of what we have available that it's connecting to, right? So here's the tenon going into the mortise. We only have this thickness of wood right here to, to house this tenon. So we, wanna be, we, wanna, we don't want to go all the way to the edge. So I'll, this is somewhat arbitrary, but I'm just going to say let's go instead of whole two inches, let's go one and a half inches deep. That's most of the way through. The farther you go, the bigger the tenon you can make, the more glue area, the stronger the joint will be. So it really does depend a little bit on what you're making. If you're making something that's gonna have a lot of racking um, and force on it, for example, a chair, you're gonna wanna make that tenon as big as possible. So one and a half inches will have to be measured on here as well. And that's gonna be the line of this shoulder all the way around. This is similar to the mortising gauge, it's called a wheel marking gauge. And 
it also has a face that you reference against. Instead of pins, it has a wheel that scribes a line. It's a sharp edge wheel. There we go. Just locks into place with this brass knob. Now I can take the marking gauge and I'm going to just scratch this line. You can see I'm pressing in, pressing down on that black wheel, pressing forward with this brass face and dragging this towards me. It takes a little practice, but once you get it, it's very fast. And I've now got a line all the way around. Now, if you didn't have this or this tool, this could be really challenging. If you've ever tried to mark something and carry it around four faces, you usually end up at a different place due to the thickness of the pencil and just your eyeball error. So a tool like this sort of takes away all that error and it's very handy. There we go. Now you want to avoid doing what I'm doing right now, which is scratching more than once. Often you will make a different line on the second time just because your hand moves. We made a half inch boundary for this. We're gonna do a half inch boundary on the ends as well. So, fully scribe out these lines, down both sides, around the top. Once I pencil these in, we will have the complete outline that we need to cut this. All right, so the tenon is marked out. The mortise, it's going to be laid out in a similar way. We know it's centered in the wood just like the tenon is, right? So we can use the marking gauge to scratch those lines. Because we're using the marking gauge with the pin set in exactly the same place, it's going to align perfectly. And that's really the goal. Now the location of this um, is sort of arbitrary. It depends on what you're doing. Sometimes you'll want to join your piece of wood right flush with the top. Sometimes you'll want it set below for a different reason. So for the purpose of our exercise here, I'm just going to mark it arbitrarily down a little bit here. And we had a one inch tall mortise. So I'm just gonna measure that with pencil here and mark it. So that's our location for the mortise. Okay, now we can take these over to the tools and get them cut.